Hello, 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 this is Alex, also known as Solomon's Dracon, and now it's time for my advanced recording series. Over the five episodes of the Basics series, I taught you the basics of OBS. How to gauge your bitrate and compensate for a slightly weaker PC, how to capture sources and arrange them, how to edit your videos with my preferred free video editor, and even how to upload to YouTube. Now it's time to step things up a bit. I'll say right up front, the advanced series is all about the audio. Video quality is easy. You can just set a couple numbers and go. There's nothing complicated about capturing gameplay. What can be frustrating, to the point of madness, is making sure that all the sound is in order. Even in the basic series, when I showed you how to adjust audio, I was shaking my head about how still nerve-wracking the process can be. You need to go off the screen so many times, sometimes without your game audio even playing, for you to gauge how things sound. You have to do several test recordings, and what's even worse, it doesn't even account for if you want to bring a friend along for the ride. Well, now we cover that stuff. The advanced series will help you learn how to superbly balance your audio, how to include voice chats with friends into it, and how to cut it all together in the final product to make it sound as best as you possibly can. So let's start off with the software. As I promised way back, everything, everything can be done free of charge if you're patient and able to tweak the system. You will need the following pieces of software in order to begin your journey. Of course, you will need the latest version of OBS Studio. I should hope you have that already. You will need an audio editing program such as Audacity. You will also need to acquire FFmpeg to be able to decode and encode your audio with Audacity if that's what you're using. You will need to get a hold of Voice Meter and VB Audio Cable, both available from vb-audio.com. And finally, we will need to adjust some settings within OBS. Today I'll walk you through the configuration of Voice Meter, because it's particularly difficult to install a software I'm currently using. I'm going to assume you've already downloaded and installed both Voice Meter and VB Audio Cable. You could get Voice Meter Banana, also available from VB Audio's website, which will give you even more options, but that can be even trickier to set up, and it's not needed for everything I just promised you. I'm not going to be showing you Banana. Uh, one thing though, when you download VB Audio Cable, you will need to install it as administrator. You'd probably find that out on your own. So, once Voice Meter and VB Audio Cable are installed, and you've restarted as they require, here's how we're going to go about using them. First and foremost, within our playback devices, we will need to set Voice Meter input as the default device. Of course, no need to bottleneck anything, so let's also go to Properties and Advanced. Jack those levels up to max, make sure the advanced has your absolute highest bit rate and hertz, and apply and OK as needed. Under recording devices, just take a peek to make sure that your actual microphone is still the default. You'll see cable output there, and voice meter output. Same as before, properties, check your levels to be sure they're max, and advance to max out the quality. It's at about this point that you might notice your system sound has either stopped, or it sounds like something has gone horribly wrong. Don't panic, help is just ahead. Now then, let's open up Voice Meter. Hopefully you put it somewhere you can find it. If not, just type Voice Meter into your Windows search bar and it'll pop up. Here it is in all its terrifying glory. First and foremost, let's just set our A's and B's up. First column hardware input, set it to B only. Second hardware input column, A only. Virtual input, both A and B. Okay, back to hardware column one, choose your mic. Hopefully, if you've chosen B, there'll be no feedback. Eh? Uh, hardware column two, cable output. That is the VB Audio cable. Whether you choose WDM or MME on either of the hardware input columns, makes little difference, but I personally choose MME. Now we go to the hardware out. You'll need to select under the A1 box either your speakers or your headphones. Now if you leave things installed just like this, this will be where you have to go in order to change your output. You shouldn't need to ever go into your recording or playback devices anymore. Voice meter has your back. I suggest you click menu and choose System Tray so that Voice Meter runs at startup. You're very bloody welcome to go around mucking with any other settings, but if you're timid, as I am, 
then you will just leave everything as it is. No, this isn't the place where we'll be doing our audio balancing. There should be no reason for you to play with any of these settings. Not for the purposes of video recording, at least. Okay, look at you. You got all that installed. I'm proud of you. Let's press on a little bit. Now it's time to configure your voice program of choice. I prefer Discord, so that's what I'm going to be showing you. Pay no attention to the list of friends on my left. Go to user settings by clicking the little gear wheel down here. We're going to go now to voice and video. For your input device, leave it as your normal microphone. For your output device, change it to cable input with the VB audio thingamy here. Ah oh, hell, while we're here, we might as well touch up some other settings. Discord sometimes has a bad habit of cutting off either on your end or your friend's end when you're speaking. I find that the best way to fix that issue is to turn off automatically determine input sensitivity and bring the slider down to about negative 70 decibels. The issue occurs because voice meter is tuned to try and get the background noise out of your conversation. Sometimes though it can actually cut you off early. Setting it down to this level will ensure your voice comes through just fine on the other end. Have your friend do the same if you want them not to have the same issue. Automatic gain control should also be turned off. This will stop Discord from messing around with your system volumes without your permission. Attenuation should be zero. No mucking around with our settings, Discord. And all other options should remain as normal. I had better mention one teeny tiny small downside though. When you set cable input as your output device on Discord, that means you're going to have to use voice meter to change to your headset. If this bothers you, then you can simply change it back in Discord to your normal headset when you're holding private conversations. Just remember though, when you want to begin recording with a friend, switch it back to cable input. You should be listening to your game audio through your headphones while recording anyway. Now, because I like to leave things at a safe place, that will be all this video is going to cover. With what we've done, we've made it so that your system audio will work exactly as normal but with the only exception being that to change to headphones, you have to use voice meter A1 hardware output. The way that things are set up now, you can continue to record your videos as you normally do, although we are not quite yet ready to include our friend in things. Although, maybe we will be, who knows. Next video, we'll talk about the settings we must shift in OBS in order to accommodate multi-track recording, the best thing you can do for your audio balance. I want to thank you for watching my advanced series on video recording. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Once again, I am Alex, also known as Solonis Dracone. Peace.